The trap is being set as we speak as of this moment and it is very much relevant towards the near term for bitcoin on the daily time frame that however is going to be resolved by a medium term time frame setup that we just have seen confirmed as of yesterday's closure because yesterday did close the weekly for cme so this analysis is going to be a bit more nuanced but understand the difference between the very very short term you know the next i would say one to five days and the more medium term which is really the next couple weeks so other than that we can just jump right into the analysis right here i want to start it off with a probabilistic setup this is based off of the same setup that i've been looking at for this past week and admittedly i did not do a great job of initially identifying where that entry should have been based off of the hpdro getting down towards negative 80 or or or, or negative 78. in this case i am going to the bitcoin index chart here and there actually was a different read than what I was looking at a few days prior on Monday, driving that likely move to the upside in the more near term. I got that one wrong, very embarrassing, but it does look like that actually has officially, that condition has, has now officially been met as of Thursday. As we do look at the stats over here, whenever we've seen this particular setup with the HP Euro getting down towards negative 78 and a half or lower, um, that has led to, uh, well, these statistics over here, relevant towards this equity curve. Again, the numbers for net profit and, and max drawdown, these are gonna be relevant for you know uh, an account size of, I think, starting at 500,000 um, with the position size starting at 400,000. So you know that's gonna be variable uh, depending upon where you actually started, but it doesn't really matter. It's the percentages that actually matter here. And what we can see is that there is a higher probability of a short-term upside move. And when I say short-term, I mean really, really short-term actually. If we go into the performance summary right here and I remove my face so you can actually see, there we go. Um, you can see that the average amount of bars and trades is two and it's actually the average amount of bars and trades on both the winning side and the losing side is two so that would correlate to two days and keeping in mind that that fired off uh one day ago or less or, or a little bit more than one day ago you know we're actually working on day number two as of right now now you know the weekend is typically uh, kind of floaty and flighty, but um, uh, I would expect that this gets resolved between now and probably Monday, maybe latest Tuesday. So in this case, the way that I tested this one is that I set up a condition here to either um, to either take a profit or take loss if a 5% move was had in either direction. So uh, max stop loss is 5%, max take profit is 5%. That is done on a closing basis. So understand that there are situations, as you can very obviously see from the um, from the strategy tester here, where you're actually gonna get outside, like more than 5%, or it could be less than 5% as well, on both sides, because it's all about where it closed. So if price trades more than 5%, but closes less than five, uh, less than 5% or, or, or more than 5% as well, um, it's gonna close that trade on the closure. So it could, it could be definitely much more than uh, 5%. In fact, if we go into the data over here, we'll find out exactly that. The average trade, the average winning trade returned about seven and a half percent and the average losing trade uh, lost about six bought seven, seven percent. So that is how we're getting this equity curve right here. And there are a couple more nuances with it, but ultimately my point is, is that Bitcoin's still more poised for a bit of a, uh, a bit of a rally off this region towards, you know, a 5% move from that entry is actually going to be about 43,350. And if we were to look at about a seven and a half percent move, that'd put Bitcoin 44 and a half thousand bucks, basically. So, you know, looking at it right here. Bitcoin's still more likely to kind of bounce out of this region. Uh, I know I've been a little bit stubborn with this over the past week, but realistically, very little has changed in this past week. Um, so, uh, so a bounce still more likely off this level into early portion of next week, probably sooner rather than later, if those statistics are to be uh, are to be listened to, which, in my experience, they are. Um, I should also add that uh, you know the percent profitable, uh, basically win rate right here at just under 56% is misleading. It actually should be much higher because when I was back testing this myself, I would just look at the first stab down towards that negative 80-ish read on the HPDRO. Um, and in this case, it's gonna look at all reads uh, below 
um, uh, 80 as entries. So for example, you know, you're going to get several entries when it starts to stay down below in this uh, particular area right here, which I would have just counted that as one. So that is where that discrepancy is coming from, especially, you know, when you get shit like this, it's going to massively weight things in favor of the, you know, of, of, of losses actually. So theoretically that win rate should actually be higher, but you can see even with, you know, this sort of, um, less nice look at things, you know, it still actually does produce a, a net, like a, a very decent net profit, I'd say over here. Um, so, you know, putting those, putting those puddle, puzzle pieces together, still do think that Bitcoin rallies off this reach. And we just have another way of looking at this. And we have uh, significantly more history based off of the back tester right here, which by the way, if you want access to this tool, it's a crown quant automation, and you can actually also automate your trades as well. It's in the link in the description below, but uh, we can go over all 218 of these setups in Bitcoin's history. So, uh, so in this case, you know, again, I, I, I prefer more data rather than less data. And, uh, and like I said, those stats are probably Probably better in in reality, better in favor of the uh, upside if you were to apply that nuance that I just um, added there. But actually, we don't really have a way of doing that on this um, on this tool as of right now. Anyways, okay. So, what would it look like if Bitcoin did fail? Well, if Bitcoin did fail, we would expect to move down to about thirty nine thousand two hundred um, first. So, you know, possible yes, but you know, coming off of not just uh, a setup like this. But also, if you're a line drawer, you can see that, hey, we have a support. We have a support. Um, <laughs> we have a support. Who's supporting it? I don't know. Uh, 40,000 bucks or so. You know, So Bitcoin likely to bounce off that region as well. But here's the thing, and this is where this analysis becomes a little bit more nuanced and to reference the title of this video. It's probably going to lead into a trap. I don't think that this bounce is going to be, the, is gonna be uh, a reversal back onto the upside. With with like major continuation, again, my criteria for that would still be a daily closure above forty six thousand five hundred. I think anything below there is likely to lead towards just a fake out and and overall downside. Why do I say that? Because with the way that CME closed yesterday, we do have confirmed bearish divergence here now on the weekly time frame, and also a bit of a herp and derp on the weekly uh, RSI as well. Which I actually do put more weight on formations on RSI rather than price action. But you know, you got your herp right there. You got your derp right there and you got your second and third herps right there um so the cock and balls formation very likely does lead this one to the downside and uh seen as the 21 exponential moon average is currently about 37 300 i do expect that that uh, I, you know, I do expect that that will actually move up coming into next week's open, but you know, we probably find Bitcoin somewhere down around about 38 ish in the next couple of weeks, uh, coming into early February. So short term bounce, very likely going to be a fake out, very, very likely going to be a fake out if it plays out at all, if it plays out at all. Um, so what else can I say? Uh, this would be a good time for me to once again, humbly request that if you do find this content valuable, please do consider liking and subscribing. It's all good and it's free to do. And you can also unscrub as well if you hate my face or if you just hate every anything or, or even if you like, you can also do that as well. You're free to do whatever the fuck you want. You're, you're a human being after all, most likely if you're watching this, except I do understand that now chat beat GPT has, <laughs> has the possibility and potential to watch these videos as well, making uh, synopses of these. Anyways, um, yeah, you know, again, I think that this is probably a good place to leave off on this video. Just, you know, nice and short and sweet hopefully as digestible as possible, basically looking at something like this, most likely, just based off probabilities, bounce up, maybe it gets to 44, uh, sorry, 43.3, maybe it gets to 44.5, somewhere in there would be a great place for a nice wick high rejection, come back down, close below 42.5, and game on. Maybe maybe one more bounce attempt at like 40,000 even, but it probably looks something like that, completes the cock and balls formation, and then we see that first march down, into February, into the sort of upper $30,000 territory. Um, again, this analysis likely plays hand in hand with the long-term analysis we've been looking at for Bitcoin, um, especially coming into last Saturday's video, we went over why Bitcoin's most likely done to the upside in the short term here, short term relative towards the next couple of months. And, uh, you know, it's time to be finding some downside, uh, you know, some at least some sideways and probably some downside as well. Again, the only way that I re the only way that uh, I would invalidate that is with Bitcoin closing dailies above 46.5 until that happens. I do think that this is a great place for some distribution. I do think that this is a great place for for a trap. 
the one thing really holding me back here is that <laughs> is that it really does seem that most of the market is looking for this. Um, so, you know, does a bounce get most of the market uh, once again excited on the other side or does it even matter? Or maybe just everyone's copy my analysis. I don't know. Maybe that's an egotistical take as well. It is actually. It's the evil market makers watching these videos. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. If you're new on this channel, I don't believe in any of that shit. Um, anyways. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Short term, still likely for a bounce here. I know I'm a broken record with that. I know that I, um, the, uh, you know, uh, earlier this week, I did get that one wrong um, for sure. But realistically, in terms of like where that setup would have fired off, it's pretty fucking close to where we're at right now anyways. So um, at the end of the day, Bitcoin poised for a bounce here. Bounce very likely fails. Anything below 46.5 is a failure and uh, leads on towards, you know, some downside. Um, still looking at Bitcoin, uh, potentially at worst case scenario, down to like 28,000 bucks. Um, but, uh, you know, well, I guess, I guess, I guess we'll figure that one out probably in February, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe March. In fact, it'll be time to do the February statistics video soon. So we will answer that question, uh, when we come to it and yeah, with all that said, I want to wish you the best of best, take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.